Those who attended the launch of the Cummins 2017 engine lineup in July got to share a unique bit of the company's history. We got a first-hand look at the car that posted a record qualifying time at the 1952 Indianapolis 500. The first lap at a record smashing 139.104 miles per hour. The first car ever to average over 139 for a full lap, and she was a diesel. The car ran only once at the brickyard. It didn't finish the race because the engine air intake clogged with tire rubber off the track, damaging the turbocharger. It was exhibited many times after that in parades and at company functions, but it was eventually retired and put on display at Cummins headquarters in Columbus, Indiana. It has languished there since 1999. That's when engineer Bruce Watson brought it to the company's history and restoration center for a mechanical overhaul. Here's Bruce to tell us a little about the car and why it was so far ahead of its time. So we're sitting in this uh, number 28 Cummins diesel special. Um, this car was built specifically for the 1952 Indianapolis 500. Um, it's a Curtis chassis built by Curtis Craft in California um, and uses a special Cummins Model J engine that was modified so that it could lay on its side and lower the center of gravity and offset the center of gravity for better performance at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It was the first car to use the offset engine design. It was the first car at Indianapolis to use a turbocharged engine. And when you start looking at some of the finer details of this car, you just see innovation after innovation. So this 1952 Cummins Diesel Special um, was the first turbocharged car to run in Indianapolis. It uses a, a shrouded compressor wheel in the turbocharger. Um, it, it uses um, dual caliper disc brakes on all four wheels. It uses two shock absorbers at each wheel. One shock absorber is of the older lever type but those have been modified to be adjustable by the driver. The car has independent front suspension, which was quite unusual for Indianapolis at the time. Most of the, of the Curtis cars and the other cars running there used a rigid front axle. Cummins built the car and went to the Indy 500 not so much to get into the racing business, but to prove what a diesel engine could do. The 6.6-liter .6 JT600 engine was a truck engine modified to race. To say it shocked the racing world would be an understatement. It set a track record at its first qualifying lap, clocking 139.014 miles per hour. To put that into perspective, a Ferrari with a 12-cylinder gasoline engine in the same qualifying round only averaged 134.3 miles per hour. He made it. He made it. The engine uses a very early version of Cummins' PT fuel system. This was one of the features that allowed the diesel engine to rev to the higher speeds that were necessary to make the horsepower for Indianapolis. Bringing the car and the engine back to life required surprisingly little work. Some of the magnesium parts had to be reverse engineered and remanufactured from scratch, along with a few of the engine and brake parts. The lubrication system had to be rebuilt because some of the original hoses were rotting. But in May of this year, after setting the valve lash and adjusting the injectors, the crew was ready to fire it up for the first time in 17 years. Watson says after spinning the engine over a few times to circulate the oil, they threw the start switch and the number 28 Cummins Special came to life with a healthy, throaty rumble. While Cummins diesel engines had run the Indy 500 before 1952, the innovative technology used on the number 28 special paid off handsomely in the truck engine business. The PT fuel system with its low pressure pump, common rail and high pressure unit injectors put the company way ahead of the competition for years to come. The car itself was way ahead of its time as well with its low center of gravity, wide stance and independent front suspension. It was also the first Indy race car ever to be tested in a wind tunnel. 
While driver Freddie Agabation was the only guy to ever pilot the car in a competition, today it's steered and geared by the same fellow who restored it, Bruce Watson. So Bruce, what's it like driving the number 28 Special? It is absolutely awesome. This car is absolutely awesome to drive. Um, it, I, I, I really wish that everybody could experience it because it is so mechanical. There, once the engine is started by the electric starter and that starter is removed, there is nothing electrical going on in this car. There's not a single electron flowing. It is 100% mechanical and it very much feels 100% mechanical. The feeling is just so solid and the sound is so solid. It's just a really amazing experience. This Cummins Special is probably one of the most innovative cars to have ever run at Indianapolis and, to, and honestly, one of the most innovative race cars ever built. And so to be fortunate enough to be able to work on this car and maintain this car and then to drive this car um, has been a truly amazing experience and probably one of the, the best experiences of my life. For Heavy Duty Trucking and Today's Trucking, I'm Jim Park with the historic and innovative Cummins Number no. 28 Special Indy Racer at the Transportation Research Center in East Liberty, Ohio.